Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Premiere Scripting Quick Tip Tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you all about Premiere Transitions, how we can both check out all of the transitions that are built in and apply them to footage, as well as how we can read them from the tracks inside of our sequence itself. And it's just going to be a couple of simple things that we can use to access all the way from our project level down to a sequence, into the tracks and the transitions, and we can apply them by the name or other things like that. So before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the Premiere Transitions code in the GitHub link. Make sure you follow us there and also check out the code for this Premiere Script Editor, which you can use to edit, open, save, and run scripts right from within Premiere. Also in the description, make sure you follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, make sure you join. You can get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. Hang out with some of our members and participators. And if you would like to help support this channel financially on YouTube and get cool perks at the same time, you can check out uh, the link in the description to become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Now, if you're familiar with Premiere, it's obviously very useful to use the built-in transitions, which make it super easy and fast to transition between clips in various ways. Uh, I personally mostly just use a cross dissolve. Sometimes I'll use uh, third-party stuff if I have it, but uh, for the most part, I just use the basic ones. And this tutorial is going to apply for both audio and video transitions, because transitions are simply things you apply between pieces of footage or clips, which can both be on video and audio tracks in your timeline. So I'm going to create a new script and just call it um, transitions. Make sure it's empty. Again, this uh, Premiere Script Editor has a bunch of things that need to be solved, uh, but I'm currently working on those. Um, we're going to start off by enabling QE. So I'll say app.enable QE. And what this does is enable some of the external and other useful features built in to uh, Premiere Scripting. And this includes things like adding transitions and effects to your footage. Then I'm actually going to make sort of a variable for the vanilla resources and the QE resources. Um, if I wanted to say access a sequence, it's different if I wanted to access the built-in sequence that is normal to scripting versus the QE sequence, which is a little bit different. If I wanted to get, say, the QE sequence, I would say app, actually I would say QE dot project.get active sequence and give it the argument zero. And if I wanted to grab the regular or vanilla sequence, I would just say app.project.active sequence. Now, there are different sort of things that are available for us to do to these different sequences as well as the clips. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and get the video track from which my transitions take place on. We're going to first want to read these transitions. So here on video track one, I have some applied to these clips. So now I need to grab video track one. Once again, we're going to grab a QE track. I'll just call it QE track one and we'll have vanilla track one. The way we get these is different and the things we can do, uh, there are some things we can do to footage or tracks that are similar in QE and vanilla. There's also some unique features in each of them as well. So to get QE track one, I need to re reference my QE sequence. And I want to get the video track at an index. Now the indexes start at zero, despite them being in parentheses, a little confusing, but we want to say give video track at zero, and this will grab the zeroth video track, in this case, the first one. Um, if I want to get the vanilla track one, I just need to grab our vanilla sequence and say video tracks index zero the uh, sort of normal way you would index something as zero. So as you can see, there's slight differences in how you can get this stuff. Um, and it will also offer us some different uh, insights on the different things we can apply to them. Now we need to then get down into our clips. All of our clips are the things contained on our video track, whether it's video or audio. Now we actually only need to get down to our track level to get all of the transitions that are applied. They're sort of stored in a track by track variable. So if we want to get just the regular transitions, our vanilla transitions, this is actually really easy. All we have to do is say vanilla track one, provide it with a track and say dot transitions. 
Now for the Kiwi, it's a little bit more complicated. We can't grab all of the transitions by just saying dot transitions or get all transitions. We actually need to reference a single transition. So if I say Kiwi transition one, I can say Kiwi track one dot get transition at and then an index. Now, as you can see, Kiwi uses the same sort of naming format to get all of the information. We have get active sequence, get video track at, get transition at. And then with the vanilla, we have a different sort of syntax. We have dot active sequence, dot video tracks, dot transitions. So the more you get comfortable with Premiere scripting, the more you'll sort of understand the two differences between vanilla and uh, QE and how to get the items from within them. So now that we have these two variables, first thing I'm gonna do is take my vanilla transitions and loop through them. So say var i is equal to zero, i is less than our vanilla transitions dot length. It might not be dot length. If I go ahead and check out the guide and type in dot transitions, it's a track item collection, which means we need to give it num items instead of length. And then each time through, we'll just say alert vanilla transitions I. And I think we just grabbed the name. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. And as you can see, we have a cross dissolve, cross dissolve, dip to black, film dissolve. So we're getting each of those in the uh, standard way. Now let's take a look at how we can get the name and stuff in the QE part. So since we just have one QE transition, let's say alert QE transition one dot name. Now if I save this and run it, maybe display name, maybe this needs to be transition at one. Try name again. There we go. So it needs to be uh, at starting at index one and going up. Maybe a little bit confusing as well. Um, there may be a way to uh, check if it's an empty variable, but another thing we can do is say inside of our vanilla transitions loop here, we can say if QE track one dot get transition at I, then we'll go ahead and alert QE track one dot get transition at I dot name and that should say loop through all of the vanilla transitions and if we find that it is full because I think you can have empty transitions uh, the same way you can get have empty clips where this is represented as an empty clip I just want to double check that here so let's save it and run it maybe start it at one see if it does anything there we go so cross dissolve and it looks like if it's if the transition isn't valid it messes it up so just know that when you're using get transition at, not every index is going to give you a transition. My guess is that this is the first transition spot here between these first two clips, but there's no transition, so it's empty. The same way, I can delete this footage in QE, and it represents this as a footage object. It's empty, but it exists. So if you're getting some weird results when reading your QE transitions, uh, try different index. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you how to do is to gather the transitions that are built into the program and then how we can apply them to footage. This is gonna require QE once again, and this isn't really something you can do in vanilla, unfortunately. So I've created a variable called transition list. You can get a list of all the installed transitions in Premiere by saying qe.project.getVideoTransitionList. I could also say get audio transition list to get all the audio ones. Now if I go ahead and say transition list index zero, save it and run it, I'm going to get additive dissolve, which is the very first transition in my list here. Uh, I could just go ahead and say 10 and get a random different one, so clock wipe. Now let's go ahead and randomize what transition we get. So I'll say transition list and the index will be math.floor, math.random, times our transition list dot length minus one. Now every time I run this, I'll get a different transition, band wipe, film dissolve, swing in, dip to black. So these are some pretty cool things we could do to now go through and apply random transitions between every single clip.
But I should say that that's just the list of names of transitions. We want the actual transition sort of object, which contains the plugin itself basically to apply. So I'll create a variable here called transition to apply. And we're gonna set that equal to qe.project.get video transition by name. And we'll provide the name here, which is just gonna be our random one that we decided here. So now that will give us the transition to apply based on a random name of any of the installed transitions. Now let's apply it between some footage. Now going back into the guide here, I'm going to type in add transition and we need to give it a QE track item and some information here. This object is definitely the transition to apply object we just got. This, I'm not sure what it's a, it's a bool, so it needs to be true or false. And then I think we also need to provide it with a time of some kind. So I have this base code here I'm going to try and modify to make it work. I have item dot add transition, transition to apply, false and a time code. Now I'm going to change these up because I need I need it to work. So first I'm going to say var item is equal to uh, our QE track one dot get item at zero. This should give us the first piece of footage here, which is this one at the very beginning. If you have an empty piece right here, remember that that's going to be represented and this is going to cause an issue. So make sure you grab the first actual piece of footage. Next, we have the time code. I don't know if we have to provide the, the point at which it ends or the point at which it starts maybe. So let's try 11 seconds. Now, if I save this and run it, you can see we get a random transition which starts at 7.06. Oh, this must be the duration. So if I wanted this to last one second, I think I gotta save it. There we go, that should last one second, starting at 12.05, going till 13.05. So you need the transition object you want to apply. And I don't know what the true or false might be here. If I put true, it doesn't work. I put false, it does work. So I guess just keep that at uh, false. But you can go ahead and put in whatever length of transition you want and it will add it, it appears to the very end of the footage. Actually, wait, true, no, save it. True adds it to the beginning. Okay, okay, we figured this out. So if you set the second value to true, this adds the transition to the beginning of your clip. If you set it to false, it's going to set it to the end of the clip. So that's how you can read and apply transitions with Premiere Scripting. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this transitions.jsx file in the GitHub link. Make sure you follow us there, as well as check out this Premiere Script Editor on there to uh, edit and use your own scripts within Premiere. Also in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. And if you're not already a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And link in the description if you'd like to help support this channel financially and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.